Well, good evening. <laughs> Do we want to run it again? Um, <laughs> well, glad to see everybody out here tonight. We, um, for those of you who were not here, two Saturdays ago, we started a study in the book of Daniel. Um, right after uh, New Year's, January 1st, uh, we talked about making resolutions. We talked about resolutions, and we had talked about making one resolution for the new year, and that's to go deeper in our commitment to God and deeper in our commitment to the church. And that led us into uh, a study in Daniel where we started talking about being faithful, which is somewhat just the same thing as uh, uh, being committed to God and committed to the church. With the first message that we did in Daniel, we looked at how we talked about how Daniel and his friends were uh, basically slaves. Uh, they were taken captive uh, in a military um, fashion, almost like POWs, as the nation of Babylon overtook the nation of Israel. And they were taken back and they were foreigners in a strange land. And we talked about how even though they were foreigners in a strange land, they chose to still be faithful to their God. They had decided not to eat the food that uh, the Babylons were eating, and they stuck with what they thought would be uh, proper with their God. And, and we talked about how God blessed that and how they were made even healthier than everyone who ate the king's food and how they were given extreme knowledge and uh, understanding in all things. So God blessed them as they were uh, faithful, and the book of Daniel um, continues through, through the entire book to uh, show us what God will do if you're faithful. And I'm going to dig kind of right into Scripture, and we're, we're going to go into the book of Daniel. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 17 to 23. If um, you don't have a Bible with you, if you need a Bible, there's some Bibles in the baskets underneath some of the chairs. If you need one and want to keep it, you are more than welcome, and you can. But it's, uh, we're going to go to Jan Daniel chapter 2, it's 17 through 23, and at this time where this verse is going to pick up, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king in, in, of the Babylonians, um, has uh, had a dream, and the dream bothered him terribly. And he called in all of his uh, advisors and wise men and asked them not just to interpret the dream because he was afraid that they would uh, just try to fool him uh, with what they were saying. So he asked them to really do the impossible. He said, tell me what my dream was and interpret my dream. And none of them could do that. And they kept telling him that no man on earth can do that. And uh, King Nebuchadnezzar said, if, if one of you doesn't do that, and, th and this also included Daniel and his friends, um, he's going to put them to death. And not only is he going to put them to death, he says he's going to cut them up into pieces. So Daniel goes and, and talks to King Nebuchadnezzar about it, and uh, he's unable to sway him. So Daniel goes back to talk to his friends, and that's where this picks up. And it reads as such. It says, Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed and the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> now I'm going to stop there, and I'm just going to um, talk for a little bit about Daniel and uh, his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, how this is a 
great example of them being faithful. And as the week's gone on, I was kind of thinking about a few things, and it, it kind of made me think of um, what would I do in this situation. I had that thought a couple times this week. So then I thought even more about it, and I thought, okay, there's actually four of them. So I have three brothers, as you all know. So I'm going to become one of these four characters in our story, one of these four men in our story, um, along with my brother. So I guess my brother Dan, who didn't show up tonight, I guess he has to be Daniel because that's his actual name. So if Dan's Daniel, um, I'm going to be Abednego because I like that name. I think that's cool. And since my brother Rick isn't here, by default, my brother Mike gets to pick whether he's Shadrach or Meshach. Which one are you going to be? You want Shadrach? Okay. So you're Shadrach and my brother Rick's Meshach. So if we're in this situation and my brother Dan, Daniel, comes back to us with this story from the king saying tomorrow morning when we get up, we have to be able to tell the king what his dream was and interpret it for him. Otherwise, we're being cut to pieces. Not just put to death, we're being cut to pieces. So I know what me and my brothers would have done in this situation. We would have tried to figure out a way to escape. That would have been exactly what we would have done. We would have, I mean, if we were already living here in the palace for a while, we probably know the guards' routines. We would have tried to think of a way to overpower one of them, kill them if we had to get the keys to the main gate, steal a horse, get a chariot, you know, whatever, you know, we, we would have put into play some kind of a plan that got us out of there, even if we died doing it, because in the morning they're going to cut us to pieces. Anyway, I just know that's what we would have done. Um, and Daniel and his three friends get on their knees, pray to God, and go to bed. That's trust, man. That's amazing trust. That's, that's being faithful. Um, they lift it up in prayer. They go to bed. And in the middle of the night, Daniel had been given the vision of what it was. And the first thing that we can take as a, a, a message for us from this scripture tonight is just the fact that uh, God hears and answers the prayers of the faithful. Daniel goes to the king and interprets this dream. He um, uh, basically, God had, had given uh, Nebuchadnezzar a dream um, revealing future things to him, uh, different, um, na different nations and different um, powers that were going to come to control all of the earth leading right up to God's kingdom coming. So Daniel goes and interprets it to him. And I, I want to move forward here in Scripture to Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to do verse 44 through 49. And Daniel is in the process right now of finishing his interpretation. He tells King Nebuchadnezzar what the dream is. And he's in the process of finishing uh, his, his uh, interpretation of the dream. And I just want to pick it up there. It's a couple of amazing things happen here. And this is Daniel talking to the king. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will in itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and the interpreta interpretation is trustworthy. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. 
Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. A couple of things that are just so amazing here. Uh, king Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon is the uh, most powerful nation on the face of the earth at the time, and King Nebuchadnezzar, it says, falls prostate in front of Daniel and paid him honor. Uh, that's amazing that the king would, would do this. And then he places him up. He, la he lavishes him with gifts and makes him ruler over the entire province of Babylon. Now, we've got to remember where Daniel and his friends came from, okay? Th this uh, scripture doesn't really tell me the time frame of how long this all takes place, but I'm thinking this all take, took place in a fairly short period of time. They were slaves. <laughs> Daniel went from being a slave, captured by a, a military takeover. His, his nation was defeated by the Babylonian army, and he was taken back as a slave. He finds himself as the ruler over the entire province of Babylon just a short time later. Uh, one of the things that we can take from this is the fact that God promotes the faithful. He hears the prayers and answers the prayers of the faithful, and God promotes the faithful. Uh, side, small little sidebar to this message. Um, I don't know if you caught in there, but it says that at Daniel's request, his friends were lifted up and promoted also. You know, only Daniel was actually promoted by the king. But then Daniel said, you know, oh, I got my friends here, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, they have to come with me too, and they have to be in a place of high authority. And, you know, the king said, yes, go ahead. So we have to remember that uh, when God promotes us uh, through faithfulness, um, we can't leave our friends behind. So they take over as uh, ruling the entire nation. Um, and again, I have to put, uh, we just really have to look at this. It'd be very easy to read this and really not understand really what's taken place, but from slave to ruler over the entire nation, the most powerful nation, it'd be like um, if uh, my brothers and I were, were Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, and this time, it'd be like my brother Dan tomorrow being made president of the United States. You know, from hanging out with us in Marion, Ohio. Didn't even run for office. He's made president of the United States. Um, you know, Shadrach here, he, uh, he becomes vice president. You know, my, my brother, uh, Meshach, um, you know, he's secretary of state and I'm secretary of defense, you know, because Dan takes the three of us with him. So we hold the four highest, office, highest offices in, in, the, in the United States of America. That's what took place here. I mean, that's amazing. It's just truly amazing. Now, if that happened uh, for us, I, I know pretty much what would happen. We'd have the Oval Office turned into like a sports club, you know? There'd be a big, huge, you know, uh, arena screen TV in there with football games on it that over in the corner would be, you know, a nacho vendor with cheese. So whenever we wanted them, we'd have nachos and cheese and there'd be empty pizza boxes everywhere and snack, Snickers wrappers because we could have whatever we wanted brought in and um, be tons of Mountain Dew in there. And we'd be like putting pictures of uh, uh, other foreign leaders up on the wall and we'd throw darts at them and stuff. And you know, I'd probably take the hotline because, you know, they have a phone in there that will go to leaders of other countries. And I'd be, you know, prank calling, you know, Putin over in Russia. And, you know, it just wouldn't be good, you know, but I, I know that's what we would do, you know. Um, but when God promotes us, it's not just for us or promotes anyone through faithfulness. It's just not for them to be blessed, 
Um, it's so that they can be in a position of higher authority and can be of a higher influence to more people for his plan and his purposes. Um, I know God wants to bless his children. I know he wants good things for all of us. Uh, he wants us to have the desires of our heart, and he wants to do good things for us. You know, as, as it says in here, what happened to Daniel, it says he was lavished with gifts. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, says a lot right there. And, and, and I know that's part of it when we're faithful. You know, God wants to be good to us, and, and he does want to reward the faithful. But in, in this kind of situation and in most situations, when some form of a miracle occurs and, and someone is promoted in some way, shape, or form. It's for some plan or purpose that God has. We're going to find as we go forward in, in future weeks what God's plan and purpose was for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, but he definitely had a plan there in, in promoting them. Uh, they, they basically overnight um, became famous. You know, they had... Uh, uh, fame and fortune given to them overnight. They, uh, they had to be the most talked about people in Babylon the next day. You know, much like if me and my brothers took over the whole nation and we were in the White House. You know, everybody in the nation would be talking about the, the, you see the Longstreth brothers took over the White House or in charge of the entire nation and you know what they're doing? You know, it would be talked about in every household and in, in all of the news. This was an amazing thing that took place. And we have to be careful of, the, of things like this that happen in our lives. When we're, we're called to be faithful and when we're faithful, faithful with a little, God will give us a little more. And there's two things that come into play that uh, Daniel and his friends did not fall prey to that I'm afraid um, I have in the past and, um, and you might possibly struggle with in the future. The first is pride. The first thing that comes into play when God promotes you is pride. It's very easy to think that this is something that you've done on your own. It's very easy to to build your own self up for um, some form of an accomplishment like that, like what happened there. Um, the second thing that happens is you have to be prepared for the enemy. When you're promoted in such a way as they were, or, or on any level, where, wherever you work or whatever, there's going to be those people that aren't happy about it, the people who you leapfrogged over, or the person who thought they were best in line for the job. It says that Daniel and his friends were in charge of all of the king's wise men. The wise men were probably hanging out with him for years, you know? Um, and he's now in charge of all of them. You know, none of them would have been happy with that. And uh, we're going to see as we move forward in future weeks here with this, with this study that that is exactly what happens. And and that will happen every time. That, that will happen wherever you work and whatever you have going on. If, if you're promoted, if you're brought, if you're brought up, God, God takes you to a different position or to a different level, there's going to be those that are not happy about it. In this study that we're doing about being faithful, we're called today to stand the same way that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood back then. Um, there's two things, I think, that keep us from being able to do that. And, and that's, that's the main uh, point of my message for you today. The first is this. In Daniel's prayer, he said that God changes times and seasons, and he sets up kings and deposes them. I think that's just awesome if, if you think about that. Daniel believed that his God was in charge of all things. He was in charge of time itself and all things that were going to take place in time. He sets up kings and he takes them back down. He controls all things. He brings people to authority and he takes authority away from them. He controls all time. If we're going to 
live a faithful Christian life or a godly life, and we're going to be faithful to God, we have to have this kind of faith. If your heart and your faith isn't fully grounded in the fact that God is in charge of all things, then it's just way too easy to waver in the face of adversity. I mean, you have to know and believe deep within your heart that God is in charge of all things. If you're going to face difficult times and difficult adversities, and you're going to stay strong and be faithful to God, you have to believe that. The second thing that I know has hurt me and I think that hurts everyone is, uh, is fear. We're always stricken with fear. We live in a world um, that's basically not following God. Um, even our country and in our nation, the moral values of our country have fallen. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of issues, even within our nation. And um, most of us, I know that I have this, every day find ourselves out in the world, and I'm not with you guys. <laughs> you know, if we could all stay together all day, every day, you know, this group. Um, I could, I could be very strong and very, you know, faithful to God, but I, I leave here and I go to work and I go out in the community and I'm going to be around people that, you know, are not Christians or are not following God as, as I want to follow God. Um, our society just in general uh, has all of these things that are acceptable uh, to, um, to our nation and, and to our people that aren't acceptable to God. And if we're going to be faithful, we we can't accept it into our lives, which means we have to step up and we have to be different than everybody else. And that's a scary thing to do. It's, It's not easy to be at your workplace and you're with seven other people who are living in the world and they're talking about doing something or something at work or... Or, or anything that goes against, you know, God's word or what you know uh, God would not approve of. It's not easy to stand there and be the one person out of 10 that says, you know what, I, and I, I, can't, I can't agree with you guys on that or I can't go along with you to where you're going or what you're doing. You know, the God that I worship and serve would not be happy with me if I did that. That goes against God's word. Um, and so I just, you know, I can't be a part of that. That's not easy because now you're the, you're the odd person out. Um, it, it's very difficult. It's only through our faith in God, very, very strong faith in God, that we can overcome this kind of fear. And we're called to be faithful, not fearful. Amen to that? I looked up in, in the dictionary, I, I, I always tell you guys this every week because I like doing this, I like looking at what the dictionary says for different meanings of words, and then I look at synonyms and things and just kind of run it through my mind and see what it says. This is what it said about the word faithful. It said, having and showing true and constant loyalty, keeping your promises or doing what you are supposed to do. Being steadfast in affection or allegiance. Then it said, having fortitude and resolution in adherence and imperviousness to influences that would weaken it. I know that all sounded kind of weird. Uh, My wife, I think, thought I should scratch that one out. (laughs) That's okay. Um, you know, some, being impervious to something means it just cannot, it can't touch me. You know, everybody's got a cold. But if I'm impervious to it, I can just hang out with everybody with the colds and, you know, I can't get nothing. It, it can't enter my, my being. It, it just, it can't touch me. And it says if we're faithful, we're impervious to influences that would weaken our faithfulness. 
So the outside world, Satan himself, the moral character of our country, none of it can touch me. None of it, if I'm faithful, if I'm being faithful to God, none of it can weaken my stance with God. And then I looked at some synonyms, and the synonyms were constant, dedicated, and devoted. I thought those were were good words as well. And I just love everything that it says there. And I want to be faithful to God. That's the man that I want to be. Um, it's, um, it's difficult in the world in which we live. Uh, society wants us to conform to it. And we have to stand and, and just be different. You know, I know that's what the, uh, the screen behind me says as well. Um, about being set apart. We are to be set apart from the world. We're to be different than the world and everything else in the world. Uh, We're to take a stand for those things that um, would not be pleasing to God in our homes, in our workplace, out in our community. We all see things every day. You know, I know you guys do. I, I do. Um, we have to stand strong and we have to stand strong as a church family you know one of the reasons Daniel took his friends with him is you know he was going to need them to have his back later on and and we need that as a church family as we're going through this time um, this is like uh, a third message with kind of a different topic, but it's all the same thing. Whether it's making the resolution to go deeper in your commitment to God and to your church, or whether it's talking about faithfulness and being faithful, or whether you were here on uh, Consecration Sunday last Sunday, um, as we talked about starting the church fast and... um, everyone being in prayer for uh, God's presence and His uh, will to be done here at the fellowship. And um, I don't know if if you were here last Sunday, what all you've been praying for this week or or what you've given up or if you're taking part. But um, one of the things I've been praying for is just unity within the body of Christ Um, and us all loving each other well. I think it has to start there. You know, if we're going to go out in the community and be an influence in the community or if we're going to help other people, um, whatever it might be, if we're going to share the gospel, I think it starts with us loving each other well and, and all being bound together in unity. That's the one thing I've been praying for this, this week is unity. Um, and to be a faithful church uh, requires that we have unity. We each fight that battle each day on a daily basis and on an individual basis with being faithful to God. But we as a church fight that battle as well. You know, we each have callings in our life and and things that we're called to do to to take a stand for God each day. And so so has our church. You know, we have a a calling for the entire church family that we're to be doing. And... um, And that all takes unity, and that all takes being strong and devoted to our faith.